Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to WrestleMania. And coming up next, it is the rematch that everybody has been waiting for. They faced off in a match at last year's WrestleMania, where Batista had to retire in a street fight. This time, the roles are reversed. Batista is the hero. Randy Orton is the villain. And the crowd is obviously going to make sure that these men hear it because about to make his way to the ring is the man who has caused torment and pain to numerous men ever since last year's WrestleMania. This man, the Viper, Randy Orton. It's a path of destruction that can really be traced back to our inaugural WrestleMania where Randy Orton had gone through somewhat of a character shift before he had been an honest man. And although he was a vicious person, we didn't see him stoop to the levels that we've seen him over the past year and ever since. Well, Owen is here, and he's here at WrestleMania for this last man standing matchup. And although nobody's going to be leaving after this matchup, like the last time they faced off, somebody may very well get injured and put out of action for good. That's if Batista has his way. And now, folks, here comes the animal. Randy Orton in the ring, and I haven't seen that look of fear since last year's WrestleMania. Ever since Batista has come back, he has been stronger. He has been more focused than ever. And when Randy Orton took the dastardly step of kicking Batista in the skull at the Royal Rumble, that set Batista off yet again. And now, not even waiting to have the reintroductions, already going after each other and Batista throwing him over the top and remember no pinfalls or submissions no count outs or disqualifications only way to win is to incapacitate your opponent to the point where they can't get up after a count of 10 and Randy Orton already going after Batista taking advantage of no DQ at the moment and we remember the brutal street fight of the last Wrestlemania and it's getting even more brutal right here and we remember what happened this past week when Batista and Randy Orton went through the window of that venue. Oh my god, look at this! The back suplex on our announce table, and this is solid wood out here, folks. And Orton now sees Batista in the ring and already going to work on him. There's the beautifully executed drop kick by Randy Orton. You can call him boring if you want to. He's effective, and he's a tremendous wrestler. But at the moment, he's being outmatched and outpowered by Batista. Well, it seemed to be all Randy Orton for the most part, and, well, it was again just there. And what is that? Is that some of our cables out here, our electrical cables, and there's a bat breaker by Orton. And remember, the goal in this last man standing matchup is to incapacitate your opponent for a count of ten. And if he chokes him out, he won't be able to get to his feet, that's for sure. Randy Orton choking out Batista with that cable from ringside here. And Batista about to pass out and well probably still got some injuries stemming from that window smashing this past week but oh my catches him out in mid-air and slams him into the barricade and now Batista has Randy Orton held and good grief throwing him into the audience here and this is the side of the Batista that we are used to seeing he seemed to have lost his ways a little bit the last time he was in NLW but he seems to have regained it here against Randy Orton. And Randy Orton again thrown off that stage where he was just spine busted onto. And already leaning up against the barricade here. And Batista! My goodness! Batista spearing the hell out of Randy Orton right through that barricade. And Orton can barely stand. One. And well. The referee going to begin Move. his count. First time we've heard this. Three. Maybe the last as well. Look at Four. that. Spearing him right through the barricade five. here. And the referee's already up to Six. five. Orton has until ten. Seven. Otherwise he's losing. We're at seven now, but Orton back to his feet. And, well, oh, he's got a weapon in hand. Kendo stick shot by Orton. And now going to work on Batista. Now looking for the RKO on the outside. But Batista, strong enough to let it go. This ain't frozen. This is NLW. And it's much more brutal. Naturally. There's a hard knee drop by Orton. And look at him. 
Now he's unhooking the turnbuckle here, exposing the steel. And Batista, face and back first into it. Whipped hard into the turnbuckle. And now Orton going for a chair. Another, another chair. Jesus. How many chairs does he want? Oh, and there's a massive one to the head. There's more chairs here than... Well. Well, at the moment, Randy Orton. Well, he was looking to send Batista into those steel steps and got reversed into him. And now the power of Batista still on display as Orton struggles to his feet. Oh, my. Well, he may be taken off his feet again. And he is. Batista with those stairs right to the skull. And the referee again beginning his count. Randy Orton not loopy. May have a concussion after that shot. But only a four. He's back to his feet. And Batista immediately sends him back in the ring. And all those chairs. That's a dangerous environment to be in as it is. Not to mention you've got an animal like Batista. But Orton kicks him away. Oh, and has him held by the head. And the hard DDT onto that steel chair in the centre of the ring. And Batista, groggy and doesn't know where he is. But Orton now. Oh, the RKO. One. From out of nowhere. Two. Three. And Randy Orton instructing the referee four, to count him. I don't blame him. Five. Because Batista very may... Well, Six. he looks unconscious at the moment. Seven. As, oh my lord, how's he on his feet? Well, Batista using the ropes to get to his feet, but immediately collapses down again after that. RKO on the... Oh no. Orton. Go for that pump kick that ended Batista's career at last year's WrestleMania. And nearly at the Rumble as well. But this time, Batista catches the foot and clotheslines him out of his boots. Oh, now, oh my, thrown over the top with such a... Ah, there you go. And already the blood is dripping from the face of Batista and booting him in the back into those steps and that blood has fired up Batista big time. Going for the Batista bomb on the stairs, but Batista One, is back dropped onto the hard steel. Two. And Batista three, blood dripping down his face. Four. And if it continues to flow five, like this... It's going to make him groggy. Six, this constant seven. blood loss and the referee up to seven, but Batista somehow on his feet, but you don't believe he knows where he is, oh! Well, that there was instinctive. Randy Orton nearly put Batista away with this. Oh, my. Oh, no. One. Two. Three. A chair shot of epic proportions. Four. And it's not often Five, that I go silent like that. Six, but Batista, seven, the chair shot eight, to the back of the skull. And you can see Randy Orton, again, using what's around him to make it to his feet. And the centre of the ring may not have been so lucky. And that chair shot has certainly turned the tide for Batista. Oh, but this might as well. Blood spewing out of his wound. Randy Orton in peril. Oh, no! Same one at the RKO. And Randy Orton from out of nowhere, yet again. Batista may be unconscious. Two. And again, the referee Three. instructed to do his count. Four. But Batista just trying to Five. feel for something to grab onto here. Six. Well, Batista looking for some sort of Seven. Batista bomb potentially on that announce table. Eight. And that could very well have ended it. Nine. And the referee up to nine. But Batista. Oh, and that's controversial. He's up to his feet. And again, Randy Orton bleeding from that chair shot to the steps. And Orton now. Orton's done playing games. Batista, bloody mess. Center of the ring. Orton on the top. Oh, and the spear. Speed in midair. One. And Randy Orton lands. Two. On that pile of chairs. Three. That sea of steel chairs. Four. And all that Five. steel onto your back. Not Six. good for your spine. Seven. And all on bloody as ever. Eight. Referee up to eight. Oh, but he slides out of the ring, but... I don't know if he's actually technically made it to his feet. Well, now he has. Oh, and there's a punch by Batista. And Batista, something snapped inside of him. Spear and Randy Orton in mid-air. Onto those steel chairs. And now, two tables stacked up on one another. And 
blood. Oh, good grief again, that ladder from behind our stage here. And what do you suppose? Oh, no. Looking for an RKO on that stage. But Batista blocks it. Has him out. And the Batista bomb on the hard steel ramp. Two. And now Three. both men down. Four. We could very well have a double count out here. Five. For Batista back to his Six. feet. But Orton is not. Seven. A referee up to seven, but Batista sees that Orton is there and punches him away. How is Orton standing after that Batista bomb on the stage? That's what I want to know. Orton now climbing that ladder. And oh my god! One. Two. Batista! Three. Just speed Randy Orton Four. off of that ladder through two Five. tables. Six. Went right up to six. Seven. Batista to his feet. Eight. On to eight now. Nine. Orton stirring. Ten. Ring the bell. But the referee calls it off and counts to ten. It didn't last long as we'd expect. But Batista has done what he out to do for nearly two years and that was put an end to the Viper once and for all. It was a journey that was started when Batista was retired by Randy Orton at our last WrestleMania and maybe as it ended here, well, the spear in mid-air onto those chairs was a turning point, then that Batista bomb but Randy Orton refused to stay down, got up yet again and well for his sake he may have wanted to stay down climbed up onto that ladder with the intention of potentially going after Batista but Batista saw him and speared him off of that ladder off of the stage through two tables to the concrete below Batista's a winner but is anybody a real winner in this situation? Randy Orton certainly is not he is bloody he's battered he's laid out on that stretcher but Batista has got revenge Batista has got his retribution from months and years of torment and Batista is the last man standing. When you step between those ropes, you put your life on the line. It's not for the money, it's not for the fame, it's the addiction to competition. To hear thousands of people cheering your name is a greater high than any drug. The spirit of the fight flows through their veins. The technicians that craft perfection on a nightly basis. An indescribable electricity that pulsates through them. This is who they are. This is what they do. This is why they fight. They're not athletes. This isn't real. Try lacing their boots. Exciting changes coming to metal and we'll see how the main event result affects that how it plays out but right now it's the hardcore championship on the line and this man is your current hardcore champion but for how long a two-time hardcore champion is Christopher Daniels however both of those reigns have been relatively short so far however a victory here tonight was set a course for the hardcore division for Christopher Daniels and in fact, here's a statistic for you. Ever since Havoc, our last pay-per-view, every man in this matchup has held that hardcore championship. That just goes to show you how chaotic this 24-7 rule has affected the hardcore division. And well, there's five men in this matchup, but of course, the 24-7 rule means that anybody could get involved potentially to pin the champion. However, the rules of this specific hardcore invitational is that the five men in this matchup can pin anybody they want to to win the hardcore championship it's only if somebody were to choose to take advantage of the 24-7 rule that they would have to pin the champion however as it stands it's just the five in this matchup although we've seen loads of people go after the hardcore champion recently including this man the homicidal suicidal genocidal death defying Sabu well, Daniel's been made to wait by Sa Oh, hang on. Oh, for God's sake. There's William Regal and Finlay, and there's a ch belt shot. And Regal and Finlay not even letting Sabu go to the ring, already ambushing him in the backstage there. And they could theoretically pin him there, but 
I don't think they've got a referee with them, so wouldn't make sense, but at the moment there's only one referee, and how is he going to be able to keep control of this? There's the moonsault by Akio. And remember, pinfalls count anywhere, and there's no disqualifications, and Akio's taking advantage of that right now. He's set up the table on the outside and now bringing in that cookie sheet and delivers it off the bald head of Chris Daniels, and there's that DDT directly onto the cookie sheet. And Daniels on the floor now, but there you see the net breaker by William Regal. And Philly and Regal, you've got to believe, going to work together in this matchup. However, we haven't seen dissension between them over the Hardcore Championship. In fact, both men have actually held the title in recent weeks. And what was that? Finley grabbed an umbrella from a fan out there. And now Finley sneaking back into the ring. Regal working on that. Hang on. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Finley actually rolling up Regal. And look at him protesting innocence. And, well, you know it's every man for himself. And, well, Finley saying, oh, it's just a test. We'll work together now, I promise. Well, we'll see how long. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I was about to say, how long was that going to last? It didn't. There's a cookie sheet shot by Regal to Finlay. Obviously, the Hardcore Championship more important than their friendship right now. And here comes Akio with that wooden pallet and going after him again. But there's a stunner to Akio. And that may have broken his jaw right there. But there you see Finlay right back up and pushes Christopher Daniels into that wooden pallet. And now crushed underneath it. Finley the only one standing. Why on? Well, he's not standing anymore. Here comes Sabu. And Sabu up after being assaulted before the matchup in the back. And there's the chair. Cross body onto both Regal and Finley, taking both of them out. And Sabu now on our stage. And he sees a table set up here by Finley and Akio's on it. Oh my. Arabian face buster through the table to Akio. Sabu may have broken his cock six, but don't get mistaken, folks. It's not going to phase him. You can see the scars on his body from those barbed wire matches in ECW in Japan. This isn't his first time to the dance, but there's a chair shot to the skull. And, well, I don't care who you are, that's going to hurt. It's going to scramble your brains. And Sabu sees Daniels, and Daniels now, oh my, looking for the BME, but doesn't connect with the best moonsault ever. It is Sabu who moves out of the way. And Daniels now sees it, what the hell? What the hell is this? Is that? That's, that's Biggie Langston. And he just catches Sabu and me there, good grief the strength. And one, what's he doing here? And that's Big E. You know who he is, but oh, the big ending on that wooden pallet. And Langston in for the cover. And Langston, new hardcore champion. And he wasn't even meant to be in this matchup. And well, we talked about the fact that this was a invitational quote unquote but obviously he wasn't a part of the matchup so what did he have to do he had to pin the champion and well he just laid out destruction well Sabu looked as if he was gonna lay out some destruction of his own but then Langston coming in and just destroying the competition throwing Sabu through that table taking care of him and then the big ending on that wooden pallet to Daniels and pinning the champion, taking advantage of the 24-7 rule, and winning the Hardcore Championship here at WrestleMania nonetheless. Well, if you want to make an impact, you want to make an impact here in No Limits Wrestling, you do it on the biggest stage possible, and that's what happened here tonight at WrestleMania. Daniels frustrated, and look at the look of Sabu's face. He's been screwed over for weeks leading into WrestleMania, over the Hardcore Championship, and here comes Biggie Langston, out of nowhere, defeats everybody, and pins the Hardcore Champion, and well, Biggie Langston is our new Hardcore Champion, who would have thunk that five minutes ago? Well, folks, up next, a huge matchup, one of our main events for this evening, it's for the World Heavyweight Championship, 
AJ Styles in the back there and his opponent, the number one contender, the Royal Rumble winner, the dead man, the Undertaker. This is a rivalry that has spanned for weeks and months and now it finally comes to a head at WrestleMania. The Undertaker won the Royal Rumble, he earned the right to face AJ Styles at WrestleMania and AJ Styles has cranked up the volume on this rivalry driving out on his motorcycle and the Undertaker's given his fair share but the world title is on the line at WrestleMania next.